Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome. Uh, today, or this video's topic, is purging the oil system. I just had this engine off the airplane to fix a water pump leak. Um, that's been fixed. I shipped, actually, I shipped the pump out to Leading Edge Airfoils and let them put the seal in. That worked out real well for me. Um, but now that it's together, I have to get the air out of the oil system per Rotax instructions. So, welcome. And uh, Oh, I should point out I'm not an AMP and I'm not a Rotax trained technician, but you're welcome to go along for the ride. Okay, first things I did is this is the oil return connection right here. And I kind of Mickey Moused a uh, couple hoses and a screw to plug that. And the actual hose connection is, it's right down here. Uh, yeah, where you can't see it, it's just kind of hanging there. Uh, yeah, it's gonna have to get rerouted a little bit when I go to hook it back up. I've also disconnected the normal vent and I've hooked it up to a quick connect on my for my compressor. I put paper towel all around the joint between the top and the bottom of the oil tank because it sometimes spews oil. And uh, I've got a little regulator here that's kind of handy so I can set the pressure right here. So I checked the oil, it's right up to the top. I did pressurize it a little bit earlier and loosen the connection at the oil pump in the front of the engine to fill the cooler and stuff, so I got a little bit of a head start, but uh, okay, at this point I got the needle just off the stop. That should be about 10 pounds. You don't want to exceed 15. And the next step is to spin the propeller until you get oil pressure, so I'll have Okay, so I just relocated the camera while my obnoxiously loud compressor was building up. I'll turn the pressure on, spill, spin the prop. Uh, Rotex says somewhere between 20 and 60 times. Probably do about 30, 40 revs. Uh, they say to spin it until the oil pressure, first indication of oil pressure seen, but being by myself, I can't see it. So I got the camera there. That's the oil pressure. Uh, you guys tell me as soon as it comes up, okay? Okay, that was about 40 revs. I'll look at the video and see what happened. You should have yelled, guys. Okay, so I saw oil pressure on the gauge. Actually, fairly early. I cranked it a lot more than I had to. Let's take a check on the level, make sure that, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's about the middle of the flat area. So we still good on oil. We didn't run all the oil out. So there's a bunch probably in the crankcase at this point because the return is disconnected and I took the spark plugs out. Okay, next steps are to reconnect the oil return line and the appropriate back to the normal vent. Uh, I'll do that off camera. and I'll also put the spark plugs in so uh, we can fire it up because the next step, now that I know I have oil, 
we'll burp the tank and then the next step would be to take it out and warm it up but it's pouring down rain and as much as I'd like to see this thing run I think I'll wait till the weather clears up a little bit okay at this point I got the spark plugs reinstalled with uh, the appropriate heat sink compound torqued 180 inch pounds uh, we should be ready to burp the tank the magnetos are off, throttles closed, choke is off, the engine's cold. There's virtually no risk of firing the engine because there's no impulse on the magnetos on this Rotax. So I don't know if you'll hear it burp with all the rain in the background or not, but we'll give it a try. This is a quirky system, you know, relies on blow by past the pistons to push the oil back to the tank. And I just want to turn the prop slowly so that the air leaks past the rings and we don't, you know, there's no chance of the magnetos firing. Hear that? That was a good burp. Okay, so now all of the oil should be pushed out of the crankcase and back into the tank. So the oil should be back in the tank. Normally I pull a dipstick out to get a better reading. And yeah, the level has come up. It's up to about there now. It was down in there. So I think we've got things hooked up with that. Um, I'm going to knock it off for tonight because of the weather, but uh, next up we'll warm it up, start it, check the oil pressure, see that it comes right up, and uh, warm it up, and we can check the, uh, check to make sure the lifters are r working properly. Okay, at this point, should be ready to warm up. I gave everything a once over. I noted that I didn't safety wire the exhaust, the muffler, the springs on the muffler connections. I can do that later, but everything else looked okay. Okay, so fuel's on, choke is on, throttle's closed, master mags. Uh, let's watch the oil pressure here. Uh, let me get a few seconds of fuel pump, get fuel into the carburetors. Try it again. Well, that's a start. Choke on, throttle closed. And I got oil pressure there. I'm going to stop filming so I can use both hands. Okay, so I want to, this is cylinder one. I want to find top dead center to check the lifters as I turn it. Exhaust valve is open, so I'm on the exhaust stroke. Next should be the intake stroke. Now it should be coming up on compression stroke. I just got a little wooden stick here. That's about top dead center, so there shouldn't, so both of the cam lobes should be on their base circle. Now I need to push on them with uh, 15 pounds, so let's calibrate that first. Okay, so I got to calibrate 15 pounds of pressure. It's 12 inches from here to here. So if I set this to 180 inch pounds, 12 times uh, 15 is 180, and I push. So it's a fairly good pressure, but not that hard. Just get a feel for it. And one thing I forgot to point out, when you take the valve cover off, there's two O-rings. There's a little O-ring in there. That's an easy thing to miss. So you don't want to 
So you want to be careful you don't want that dropping inside the engine when it comes apart or if it just falls out and you don't know where it went and yeah so okay so I push on this for three seconds 15 pounds one two three and check the feeler gate with a feeler gauge max clearance is half a millimeter or 0.2 inches and yeah I can't even come close do the next one. It's kind of awkward with the cowl here. One, two, three. Nothing. In fact, if I were to go smaller, just for the fun of it, zero, zero, eight inches. Yeah, I can't even get that in there. So, okay. So next on the firing order is number four. I'll go around there. Uh, one thing, you want to make sure that you get the rocker cover on securely and those O-rings in place because if you're leaking here, it's not just leaking oil, it's leaking pressure from the blow-by and that pressure from the blow-by is what sends the oil from the tank case back to the oil tank and you don't want to have all the oil pool in the crankcase and run out of oil. So with that, um, assuming nothing goes wrong, that's the whole process for purging the oil system. I hope you found it somewhat useful or entertaining or whatever. And thanks for watching.